Welcome back everyone. We have this beautiful Larave guitar, cutaway guitar, that's been scalloped by Mark Aikenson of Oakville. Uh, John brought it to me because he wants to move that first string away from the edge of the fingerboard because the string seems to be slipping off for him when he plays. So we're going to cut a new nut, but first I want to take a measurement with my vernier and just figure out what distance we're talking here. So I had heated up the nut and slipped it out so that we were allowed to kind of move it around a little bit for him to find exactly what he wants. So, we, so we're talking about moving that string in from the edge of the fingerboard, almost 53 thou. So I'll keep that measurement in mind as I cut the new compensated nut. Okay, so let's begin our sort of checking process. So first thing we're doing is we're actually fretting the seventh fret note. So B and the octave. Yeah, it's about two cents sharp. So go to the A string, seventh fret and octave. D string. Okay, it's about 12 cents flat. So this is the third string, seventh fret and octave. Six cents flat. Second string, seventh fret. And that's about 12 cents flat. So first string, seventh fret. And octave. Yeah, it's about eight cents flat. So that is essentially the map that we've got right now. And we're going to show you the difference once we intonate that saddle. Let's get a closer look at that saddle. So I always start by scribing with a pencil across the top of this saddle. So that kind of tells you where all the highest points of contact are. So I've taken a pencil and just sort of scribed across the front. So you can see that these are all right at the leading edge. This is at the back edge and this is at the leading edge. So I'll base all my calculations on my replacement saddle where these focal points are located. So I started with this saddle blank material, and this is what I sell it. I sell it in long strips like this because you cut off what you need. So this is our original saddle. Is I just traced that curvature off the original saddle. I'm sure Larave gets it right every time. Left it a little bit higher than it needs to be, so we got something to work with. And then I shaped the bottom. So this is what we end up with. So that now just kind of press fits in there. And now we're going to shape this crown, and once that crown is shaped, then we'll start calculating these values. So there's our next step. We basically copy that radius from the original saddle. Now we'll start to make some calculations. Okay, so what I've done is I put a line where the original saddle focal points were all the way across, and then I've put the compensated values in. So this just gives me a map on how much I need to take off or how much I need to cut back or add to where the original focal points were. Now that that saddle has been compensated, we'll check it again. So here's our 7th fret, 6th string, note uh, B, and the corresponding octave note B, and here's our A string, 7th fret, and octave. Here's our D string, or 4th string, 7th fret, and octave. And here's our G. Here's our B string, 7th fret, and octave. And finally, our 1st string, 7th fret, and octave. So we're addressing the compensated nut now. We've taken care of the bridge. We're moving to the nut. And yeah, we're about eight cents flat on that. That's the open A. It is, yeah, it's about eight cents flat as well. The D string. It's about five, four cents flat. That's just a couple of cents flat. First string. And that's about four cents flat.
Okay, the moment of truth has arrived. String to string, fret to fret. Let's check this thing out. Here's our 12th fret 6th string and open. Here's our 7th fret 6th string and octave. Here's the 8th string 7th fret and octave. And then 12th fret and open. D string open, D string 12th fret, 7th fret, and octave. 3rd string 12th fret, and open. 7th fret, and octave. 2nd string and 12th fret, 7th fret, and octave. 1st string, 12th fret, 7th fret, and octave. So to wrap it up, this is our compensated saddle. This is the compensated nut. Well, John definitely got the full package on this one. This is a close-up of the compensated nut and its values. And then here is a look at the amazing scalloping job that Mark did. This is the third guitar I've had in here from Mark. And boy, if you want a guitar scalloped, he's the guy to see. He's in Oakville, Ontario. Immaculate work. Congratulations, Mark. Good stuff. And finally, this is our finished compensated saddle. You'll hear just how accurately this guitar intonates. All of those intonation checks are done, but of course, the real intonation check is to play the guitar. Play some chords. Let's see, Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, so this is the ultimate test. For my regular subscribers that follow this channel, you've heard me play these chords a few times. I like to take a chord. In this case, we've got a E major 9 chord, E major 7 chord, uh, and play variations and inversions along the entire span of the neck to give you a sense of how the guitar is equalized along the entire length of the fingerboard. Okay, so here we go. Here's an A minor 9. Here's your garden variety D chord that's never in tune. position, 14th position, C, first position, here's an F, here's a G chord, Here's a B minor 9.
gives you a gist of just how accurate this does tune. wraps it up for this absolutely gorgeous Larave cutaway. Always been a huge fan of Larave. This level of quality is what you expect from Larave. Absolutely flawless finish and beautiful purfling and the abalone around the sound hole. And absolutely gorgeous guitar. Amazing. Sounds like a grand piano. It's very important to understand that the fact that I did this to this guitar, it does not reflect in any way the excellent standards that Larave has always had. What we have here is an 11 to 50 string with a 22 wound tuned to concert pitch. As I've mentioned in other videos, this compensation at the bridge and at the nut, they're both moving targets. There isn't one nut and one bridge that, that will work for every case scenario. So the manufacturers can't be expected to be able to have every guitar intonated to this degree of accuracy. It's virtually impossible. You change to a different set of strings, you change your tuning, all of this stuff goes out the window. So this guitar is intonated within an inch of its life for concert pitch and those John Pierce 11 to 50 strings. And as long as those strings and that tuning are used on this guitar, he'll never even reach for the tuners. That's Cheers. it. John's on his way back from Nashville. He'll pick this up on the way through and his tuning problems are over forever.